What is going on guys? It's your boy Peter Starzynski Tech back with another video and today we're going to be discussing Apple. Now based on the title you might be thinking well I'm going to do nothing but trash Apple but just just hear me out for one minute. I promise you this video is worth your time. Now for starters I don't really think that Apple actually bullies their customers but I do think that what they do is I guess sort of bully-ish. I don't know, but anyway, this video is inspired by a tweet by Hiroshi Lockheimer of Google, and it reads, Apple's iMessage lock-in is a documented strategy. Using peer pressure and bullying as a way to sell products is disingenuous for a company that has humanity and equity as a core part of its marketing. The standards exist today to fix this. Basically what he's trying to say is that what Apple tends to do is they tend to lock their customers in, in an ecosystem, so to speak, a system separate from Android. And what they try to do is they try to keep themselves separate as a way to keep their own services and keep their customers. Switching out of iOS can be a very convoluted process to get your text messages Again, when you go to Android or any other OS, you have to get your phone number out of FaceTime or iMessage or whatever you're using on iOS. And it can be very difficult because a lot of that is buried in the settings. But now let's say you did manage to remove your phone number from iOS and from iMessage, FaceTime, etc., etc. Well, now you become a green bubble to your friends. And that causes problems, particularly in group chats, because now suddenly you have to restart that group chat. You have to create a whole new one to include that person. This could also lead to a thing called Android shaming, but it is Apple's way of separating Android users from iOS users. Also, when you switch to Android or to any other operating system, you lose the Apple reaction emojis. So basically, when someone sends you a text from an iOS device to an Android device, it will say, this person loved this message. Instead of getting the colorful emojis, you just get some text. Then there's your apps. Some apps are not going to be available on Android. Some apps are not available on iOS. However, this creates a big problem because then some of the apps that you have on your iOS device will probably not be available on your Android device. And also Apple doesn't have a way of app developers allowing users to carry over in-app purchases or app purchases over to Android. So you would have to buy the app all over again once you transfer over to Android. And this is something that customers do not want to do. They want to save money. So they don't want to have to buy the app again. It is understandable that app developers don't want to have to develop for Android because there's a billion devices out there. Whereas on iOS, you only have to develop for a few devices. Also your contacts, your calendar events and stuff like that, that's saved on your iOS device and saved to iCloud, that's all gone. Can't take that over to Android. Number two, Wear OS on iOS. Now, this has not been a perfect marriage between Wear OS and iOS, obviously, because Wear OS is Google's operating system for watches and iOS is Apple's operating system, which is very closed. Now, while integration has gotten better between Wear OS and iOS, um, there's still some features that you can't use. For example, you can't respond to iMessage text from Wear OS. In the beginning of Wear OS, or as it was called Android Wear back in the day, there was compatibility issues, meaning that not all apps would sync up because of app availability from the iOS store. Some apps are still not available on Android that would typically be available on iOS, let's say. However, that's not as much of a problem because now Wear OS devices now have the Google Play Store natively on those devices. 
Also, Apple doesn't allow for Wear OS devices to receive notifications from iPhones. The only notifications you can, however, receive are the notifications that the Google apps send, such as Calendar or Gmail or whatever other notifications that Google can send. There's also some features that are on Wear OS that you can't use when using it with an iOS device, such as taking a screenshot. You can't take a screenshot of your Wear OS device for some reason. Also, the camera feature that Wear OS has where you can control the device's camera, mm, yeah, you're not going to be able to do that on iOS. Number three, the price of Apple. Now, what I mean by that is that Apple products are expensive. In fact, having an Apple product today is a status symbol according to a 2018 study. If you look at most of their Mac computers and their laptops, you'd be very hard pressed to find one that has come out within the last couple of years that's below $1,000. Now, sure, you could buy the Mac mini that comes in at $699, but then after that, you gotta buy the mouse, the, the keyboard, the monitor. You gotta buy everything else to go with it to make it even work. Now that brings me to the iPhone. The iPhone comes out every year and usually it costs more than $1,000. Usually, but a lot of their devices are getting cheaper and cheaper. So you could, for example, buy an iPhone 11 for roughly $499, but all the new iOS devices that keep coming out these days are costing right around $1,000, and that's because phones these days are getting very expensive. Even to buy something like the Apple Fiber Cloth, that costs right around $75. That's very expensive. And it's further proof that Apple is more of a status symbol of wealth as opposed to being a company that's there and that sells its products. Having an Apple device or an Apple anything gives off the vibe that you have money. So my final thought is that Apple is an ecosystem. So anything you have, like if you have an iOS device, you're better off buying the Apple AirPods or the Apple Home or, or a Mac computer or whatever. But this is their business model and it's a very good business strategy that they've been using for a long time and it's working for them. They sell a lot of products and they make an awful lot of money doing it. And yeah, so that is it. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And uh, tune into my Twitch channel where you're streaming Uncharted these days. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.